Hello again, YouTube. I'm going to be talking about the new Sun and Moon information for a second time, actually, because I was an idiot and forgot to put my mic down when I was recording the first time. So, we have a bunch of new information to go through. We have the legends, their moves, rivals, trainers, and just the overview of the entire region, and one new feature in particular which revolves around the Pokedex. So, let's get straight to it. First off, we'll lead by talking about Solgaleo, or Solg Solgaleo. I don't exactly know which one it is. I'll have to wait for some official source to actually say the word. Uh, people have speculated that Solgaleo was its name due to trademark leaks. However, it actually is 100% confirmed now that this Pokemon is called what it is. Solgaleo is a Psychic Steel type, and its ability is called Full Metal Body, which stops Pokemon from being having its stats lowered at all. And going by the website, it's a new ability that no previous Pokemon had ever had. <sighs> Which is actually not true, seeing as how this is just clear body. And which is also owned by a psychic steel type. Steel psychic. There's not much of a difference, but there's a difference. Game Freak, you can't pass that off as a new ability. You just can't. I think they did the same with Gen 5. I'm not entirely sure which, but they did it. Solgaleo's signature move is called Sun Steel Strike. One, it gets points for the name being kinda cool. And two, it actually does look kinda cool. It's like kind of like flame charge except you go into the air and then smash down on your opponent without giving a care about whether they live or die. Overall, A plus for Solgaleo in my opinion. It still looks pretty cool, has a good move, not as good as the other one in my opinion, but it still gets good. It's good. Before we go into Moon's legendary Pokemon, I'd like to talk about the UI which honestly is pretty disappointing in my opinion. It's really, really obnoxious. The boxes for the health take up the entire corner of the screen, and I mean the whole corner of the screen, and the ability notifications are just way too big. In this scene, you see more UI than battle, and it's all so solid, it's not transparent or translucent at all, it's just, uh, it's just there in your face, and I, that's one thing that bothers me about games a lot is their UI and how obnoxious it can be. I mean, look back at Ruby and Sapphire. It's smaller, less obnoxious, somewhat transparent, and overall, it's actually nice to look at. This one is big, clunky, and kind of vibrant and cartoony, which, I mean, I guess that makes sense, but still, it's not very organized, in my opinion. I mean, I expected UI changes. No set of game has the entirely same UI as the previous ones, but in my opinion, they really need to tone the sides of those things down. Alright, anyway, the next legendary Pokemon has been confirmed to be called Lunala. Lunala is a psychic ghost type, which is actually a fairly unique typing, seeing as how I think only one other Pokemon has it. I don't know. Its ability is called Shadow Shield, which makes the Pokemon take less damage from an attack that lands when it has full HP, which is literally just multi-scale. Granted, only two Pokemon have multi-scale, but why didn't they just give these two Pokemon clear body and multi-scale? It doesn't... It doesn't make sense, in my opinion, for them to create an entirely new ability for it. Alright, whatever. Moving on. In the previous trailer, we got a, we saw a glimpse of Lunala's signature move called Moongeist Beam. However, we now get to see the full thing in action, and it looks way better than Solgaleo's, in my opinion. It's also called Moongeist Beam, which is actually just great. It's a great name. It's a great move, too. Anyway, it's also very shiny. Like... It just, it looks so cool. I, oh my god, I'm probably the minority in saying that I want to get Moon because of Lunala, but still, still. Next we get a good view of the entire Alola region. Last time we only saw the first starting island, and the region seems to consist of at least four islands with a possible fifth one hidden in this darker area down here. Probably for post-game reasons. We have the obvious starting zone for the journey, what appears to be Mount Chimney, the Grand Canyon, and Mount Coronet over there down there in the corner. No, but all joking aside, this region actually looks fairly expansive, with each island seemingly having habitats to support unique Pokemon compared to each different island. We can see the entire region from this point, which shows us every town, forest, wasteland, a snowy mountain, which hopefully has some good ice types. Yeah, that's not happening. It's Ice type is bad in my opinion, even though I really want it to be good. That thingamajig there in the middle, which looks to be some sort of battle tower, and there's that one town over there which looks like Fort Knox. Overall, this region seems diverse, and I really do love that. It's the main reason I love the Hoenn game so much. Everywhere you'd go would just be entirely different. Like in Hoenn, you had the forests of the beginning. 
You had the deserts, you had the plains, you had Mount Chimney and under Mount Chimney and oceans and everything, and all of that seems to be making some sort of a return here. Each island has its own different thing, and that is going to make this more of a pleasure to play in my opinion. I do speculate we'll be seeing more of this region because of this image here, which shows that tiny island up there in the corner. It's covered by clouds, so it's possible that all the cloud cover in this image will move out of the way and there will be a new island down there, there will be something else up there, maybe even smaller islands just all around the e extra portion of the region. I don't know. The bottom of the map just looks very empty to me. And it's not like they haven't hidden away things before behind cloud cover. I mean, look at Ruby and Sapphire's map. They hit off the entire battle resort with cloud cover. It could just be wishful thinking on my part, but, you know, I'm gonna go with it. Next, we have the main player characters. The male trainer character looks fine, in my opinion. He actually looks really good, and... I don't know, he just looks kinda cool. He could use with some less saggy pants, though, but the female trainer looks as though she gets fashion tips from Spongebob and Patrick, which... Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, might make some sense. It's considering the geographic location of the region. Anyway, we get the same scene of the skin tone selection shown in the initial Japanese trailers, and that's really about that for these characters. Uh, one massive thing to take note of is the device on their wrists. No, these are not Mega Bracelets, they are not Mega Rings, they are not anything to do with Mega Evolution by the looks of things, and that's because I can't see a keystone on it. Like, it's got... Like, if you look at the Japanese Pokemon Sun and Moon logos, they have a little diamondish thing in there. And if you look at the male bracelets, it seems like the yellow version of that is jammed in there. So, I don't know what these bracelets are for, but hopefully we'll see something later this month about it. But as it is, I don't see any spot for a keystone on that bracelet at all, unless you can remove the gem and put a keystone in it. So you can either Mega Evolve or do this new thing in these games, and I don't know. It, It's very iffy right now. I just, I don't know where to go with it. Uh, next we have Lily, who is the professor's assistant. She's supposed to play a major role in the story and apparently doesn't like Pokemon battling it much at all, really. But it does say she likes to read, so I mean, I guess there's that. That's all there really is to know about her, there's not much to say. Next we have Hal. I guess that's how his name is said. Hal. He seems just as energetic as Bianca or Shauna and apparently loves eating. Uh, something in particular that's specific to this region. Point is, he's your rival. More of your friend, but still your rival. Next we have the professor for the region, Professor Kukui. That's still a weird name to say. Overall, he looks like he'd sound like Shark from Zexel, and just... I'm never gonna get that out of my head now. He's the professor of this region, and that's really about that. He wants... by the look of things, he wants to study Pokemon moves, rather than how Professor Oak wants to study Pokemon Evolution. Sycamore wants to study Mega Evolution. There's no news on that other professor that was shown in the previous trailer, but we'll see. We'll see. Okay, um, well, <sighs> this next thing, I really don't even know where to begin with it. It's a Rotom. It lives inside your Pokedex, and it speaks to you regularly. Yeah, I don't know, I don't, ah. Uh. I was wondering how they were going to top the compact, how compact the Kalos Pokedex was, but I never expected them to actually bring the Pokedex to life. I mean, it's an interesting concept, and I don't know. It just, it. let's see how well they execute it. Although I swear to God, if this thing sounds as annoying as Navi, and every time you pass by a new Pokemon or whatever, it goes, "Hey, listen, I'm going to, I'm going to find a way to destroy it." Uh, like the Kalos Pokedex, it seems to have multiple entries for each area of the region, presumably one per island and a national Pokedex. Furthermore, you can scan the QR you can scan these new QR codes. They're not new, QR codes have been around forever, but there are QR codes specific to this game. And you can scan them and it will add the Pokemon to your Pokedex. According to some new information, the main use of the QR codes is to find out about Pokemon. It will flag up with information about the Pokemon. This will then allow you to seek out Pokemon in the game, with the location being put into the Rotom Pokedex. And that's really about it. That's all we really had to talk about. Um, one other thing to take note of is that Nintendo will be at E3 this time around with Sun and Moon. And I honestly didn't expect that because a lot of what everyone was saying was that they were only going to be showing the new Zelda game there. And I don't know, I'm kind of looking forward to E3 this time. 
I'd rather look forward to a game that's coming out this year than a game that they've been delaying for several... I don't know. Point is that I'm... Hopefully we'll see more. Hopefully we'll find out what the wrist thing is. Hopefully we'll find out a couple new species of Pokemon. They haven't really shown anything in that area yet. So, we'll see. Alright, that's about it. That wraps things up. What did you guys think of these new features, the new information, the footage, everything? Just what did you think about it all? If you like this video, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this video or videos on my channel. Until next time.